Anyone who doesn't pay tithe will not go to heaven. Yes or no? Anyone who is not paying his tithe is not going to heaven. That is not a correct conclusion. You know, a lot of pastors will tell you if you don't tithe, you remain poor. Where do you people get those pastors? Do you accept tithes? Yes. As a pastor, you accept tithes. So who do you pay your own tithes to? Tithes should be removed from the church doctrines. But as long as you've not bribed God yet with that 10%, <laughs> you're still cursed. Now they're pushing the problem to you that the cause of this, your poverty, is because you're not paying tithes. If you don't pay your tithes, you, the resultant effect is that there's a cause on you. If I spend my time to watch over you spiritually, pray for you, preach to you, and train you in the way of the Lord, I deserve to get from you. And that's what tithe is. Take care of the priests and take care of the church. When people come to church, they sit down, nice chairs, AC blowing, things are working. What do, do what do you think? What where do you think the money is coming from? He said like you give ten percent to the church, but you don't do you, do, you are not taught what to do with the remaining ninety percent. You are going to be poor. Ten percent is a lot of money. It's still the poorer people that still pay tithes a lot. Welcome to another episode of In the Name of Danny. The last one you guys dragged me, so I'm not supposed to smile. But I forgive and forget. Daniel is different from Danny. I mean, Danny boy is different from Danny. Uh, today's episode is quite thought-provoking. It has been widely used, asked, bashed, dragged. And um, it is a lot. However, I would like to introduce the host, Ajebo Danny, a.k.a. Danny Water. Hello, my name is Danny, aka Ajebo Danny. Welcome to another episode, another chaotic episode. <laughs> Our guest on this episode is a man of God, a prolific Bible teacher, televangelist, radio host, author and traveling minister with a strong healing ministry. His teachings are full of insights and laced with humor that will ensure you never forget the message. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Pastor Feyi Abraham Adesonya. Thank you for having me. Good to be with the two Dannys. And yes, it's not going to be chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Welcome in the name of Danny. My name is Daniel Alabi. For quick attention and convenience, please call me Danny Boy. And um, I am more than glad to be the co-host for In the Name of Danny. My first question today is, what is tithing? And I'm going to answer as well. Biblically, tithing is one-tenth of your income. Am I correct, Pastor Faye? Yes, you are correct. Okay. A tenth. Okay, a tenth of your income. That's just like the simple definition. Um, Pastor Faye, do you believe in tithing? I do. <laughs> Danny, do you believe in tithing? <laughs> of course, I don't. Okay. Uh, why? Why do you not believe in tithing? Um, because I think that teaching is false. It's been used to extract money from from people. Okay. Is it the teaching, is it Titan itself you have an issue with or the fact that it has been used to extract money from people? Titan itself. Okay. That leads me to my next question. Why is tithe important? Well, it's important because um, it's a way to honor God with our substance. And then it's a, like, how do I say, a base point for how to give to God generally. So, yes, if you are not good with tithing, if you don't believe in tithing, you never can, you will most likely will not be a good giver. So, you believe all tithers are good givers? Yes, yeah, if you can give 10%, I mean, that's a base. I think you can do better. You can do better. The New Testament actually encourages you to do better. But if you have a problem with 10%, of course, you, are, you, you, can't, you can't be a good giver. Okay. I would like to question that. I would like to question that because most people that know Daniel, especially from Twitter, they know that he randomly gives out stuff, money, you know, and he's not a tither, at least as at now. Does that mean that he's not a good giver? Well, give, I'm not talking now about giving to people generally. I'm talking about giving to God. Okay. However, in his own case, um, 
as even funny enough, he said he doesn't believe in tithing. But I'm sure you've given tithes at some point yes. before, and your parents give tithes. Yes. Good. So again, that has helped you to be a good giver, whether you want to admit it or not. So hmm. you're saying the tithing is like a training process for yes, giving. It is. It will because it, it, since you have to a particular amount and a, 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 the consistency of doing it, yeah. do you understand? It helps you to be a giver. It just it sets you in that way. So yes, you might not believe in it again, but if that you saw people doing it, you have done it at some point. Yeah. It has already programmed you to be like that. To be so um, if I give tight at some point and then I stop, I'll continuously be a good giver. So that means Christians can give and stop at some point and still be good. Stop giving totally. Yeah, but because they tied it before. I'm just I wonder are you saying they'll still be good givers. I'm just saying that if you if you believe in tithing as yeah. stipulated in the scriptures, that's a base like a foundation. Right? It's, it's, it, it, tithing is not the height of giving, the biblical giving. In yeah. fact, truth be told, the offering can be more than your tithes. Yeah. So, I, that's why I have an issue with people. If we're arguing about tithes, what are we going to say? Because I don't find people arguing about offerings. Mm. But they are arguing about tithes. Meanwhile, your offerings should be more than your tithes if you are really a good giver. Okay. 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 I like that insight. I would like to ask, is tithing a requirement for Christians today? Because... It looks like from the look of things, we have started splitting Christianity by generations. And it feels like we are beginning to dilute, increase, decrease, have an equilibrium. So is it a requirement for Christians today? Are Christians of today mandated to tithe? No. As a New Testament believer, you are not mandated to tithe as it was done under the law. Because you've been redeemed from the law. However... The issue about tithe is that tithe predates the law. People have been tithing. Abraham tithed, Jacob tithed, before the law was instituted. So, even though the law is no longer there, which means that you don't bear any, there's no consequence for you not to do that, it's still a good thing to do. And the example I normally like to give is this, the seat belt in your car. Mm. The seat belt was designed for your safety. Later on, the government made a law that if you don't put on the seatbelt, you are going to charge you social amounts. Now, let's say the government now removes the law and say, okay, don't worry, if you'd like to use the seatbelt or not, the law, is, the law is no longer there. Does that remove the importance of the seatbelt? It doesn't. The seatbelt still exists for your safety. So, the law may not be there. Last man will not catch you, but it's still a good thing and a wise thing to use the seatbelt. You know, the issue I mostly have with Titan is how manipulative that entire process is. You know, pastors keep hitting on Titan because um, this now will mandate you to bring, you know, a certain or stipulated amount. amount from your money. Mm. With offerings now, you can freestyle. You can decide to give 59, you can decide to... But now, the, the Titan is conditioning your mind that if I'm any 100k a month, I have to bring 10,000 10, out. Mm. So Titan is like tax, but for the church. <laughs> it's the church taxing you now. And you know the thing about tax? Tax is compulsory. Yeah. And that's the same way with tithe. It's not a donation. Often it's a free will donation. Yeah. You're giving to the church, as with every gathering. If you're in a, if you're in a school, if you're in a, in a, you, there's usually a contribution. Mm. You know, in every gathering, you need money. That's where offering comes in. But tithe is what, you know, it's a law of, of, of the olden days that we are still using. And we are not supposed to. So if, I mean, again, that, that's what I asked you. What do you have problem with the tithe or how it's been collected? And from what I can hear from you is how you think people, pastors have used to manipulate people. Mm -hmm. And the go-to scripture is Malachi 3. <laughs> if you've yeah. been in church any length of time, you yeah. know that that's, that's about the only thing some people know in the book of Malachi. <laughs> so, Pastor Faye, yeah. Danny, I would like to come in here with what you might have in your cue cards as specimen one. 
So I'm going back to where you said tight is not mandated for today's Christians. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at specimen one. Anyone who is not paying his tight is not going to heaven. Full stop. Now, specimen two. No, sir. The prerequisite for heaven is not tight. The prerequisite for heaven is Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish. Not whoever pays tithe. And of course, here comes specimen three. Somebody now said, if you don't pay tithe, you are not going to heaven. That is not. A pastor said recently, he said that if you see anybody that is prosperous without tithe, he will drop the Bible. We wish he dropped the Bible because we have millions. Go and Google for it. Qatar is one of the blessed countries in the world. And it's a Muslim country. They don't pay tithe. And they are well blessed. If tithe is the reason why we are going to be blessed, nobody should be poor in Nigeria. Because they have been paying tithe when I was inside my father's and mother's room. Back to specimen one, Pastor Faye. Anyone who doesn't pay tithe will not go to heaven. Yes or no? Well, I respect the man of God. <laughs> <laughs> However, that is not a correct conclusion from the scriptures. Anyone who doesn't give tithe, I mean, it has, it has nothing to do with your uh, eternity. Let's be frank. What you need to get to heaven is to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So let's let's get that right. It's not it is there's no basis from the scripture. As so far that as I statement, know. anyone who doesn't pay tithe will not go to heaven, is not biblically correct. Yes, and I would like to believe that the man of God was, I mean, that snippet was cut out of context. <laughs> no, I disagree, because um, they've reused that context over and over again. You know, if they are not um, threatening you with heaven. They're threatening you with the windows of heaven. You know, a lot of pastors will tell you if you don't tight, you remain poor. The tight is, is the reason why your life is tight. Where do you people get those pastors? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these are these are. I'm a pastor pastors. and I've been one for over 15 years. And uh, most of pastors I meet are not like that. So I'm wondering where do you people meet these kind of pastors? <laughs> do you accept tight? Yes. As a pastor, you accept that. So, who do you pay your own tithes to? I pay to other ministries too. And you pay for every income. That if you I receive. don't like the word using the word pay tithes, okay, it's give tithes. That's what the Bible says. The Bible never said pay tithes. So, don't make it look like a payment. It's a giving. <laughs> but that's what it is. If you if you have to stipulate to someone the exact amount you want them to give it's a payment the, okay it's back giving back giving to, back to what i was saying before that tithing did not start under the law so malachi 3 is not a good verse of scripture to tell new testament believers that was also in the Trinomy. yes yes that is a law the law Mm -hmm. The law started from Exodus and is stipulated there. So, but people have been given tithe as far back as Genesis when there was no law. And it was a free will thing. It was not a commandment. Abraham decided, I will give, I will give Melchizedek 10%. Do you understand? So, that is the original intent. Under the law, it was made that this is the rule. And yes, people did that. But now we are even out of the law. So why should you give us a me as a, a composite you must give ten percent? I feel that in fact the New Testament de demands more than ten percent. It says give right. liberally. Yeah. It says cheerful giving. It mm -hmm. says let every man give us his proposals in his heart. Yeah. That's not ten. That doesn't sound like ten percent to me. That sounds like more than ten percent to me. If you be honest, if um, I say give Pastor liberally, Fee, you know um, why I'm vehemently against Titan. Mm. We are in a very very poor country. Okay. And I see no reason why the government will task, um, tax us. Mm. Um, the church will also tax us. They, there, shouldn't be, there shouldn't be a stipulated amount for people to give. Let people give what they want. Titan should be removed from the church doctrines. That's what I'm saying. Well, Sorry, it's, it's in the Faye, scripture, so you can't... Hold on. Before <laughs> Pastor Faye answers that, I have a backup point as regards that. And uh, I'm directing this to... Danny, yeah. But I'll quote what Pastor Faye has been mentioning since Malachi three ten, according to the Amplified Bible, it says, "Bring all the tithe, the tenth, into the storehouse," which contradicts where you says, 
it should not be a stipulated amount, right? Mm. Into the storehouse, so that there may be food in my house. And test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you so great a blessing until there is no more from to receive it. There is no more room, rather, to receive it. The verse after it goes ahead to say, to say rather, Will a man rob God and cost with a curse, for you have robbed me? That means if you don't pay tight, you are stealing. And I'll come to that, um, that note shortly. Because you tweeted one time that your pastors use emotional blackmail to actually force people to pay. No, they don't use guns. They threaten you with poverty and windows of heaven. Are you trying to say that God himself that says you should bring the tithes into his storehouse for him to open the window of heaven? Because do not steal is in the commandment of God. If you don't give God one tenth of your offering, that means you are stealing from him. Okay. Um, for the, the book of Malachi, I think that entire chapter in Malachi is very, very manipulative. Um, I'll tell you a story. Um, when I when I go when I travel out, I usually go to facials, you know, in each country, so I can experience different um, different people do these facials. I should have a different experience. When I go to um, a new country, there's a pattern I usually notice in each of these people. So what these women who do these facials do is they come to your face and do um, a consultation first. They look at your face to tell you the particular um, facials you should do. So when they come to me, they will, they will tell me, oh, you're so fine, but there's this one or two spots on your face and you need to do this treatment for it. So what they do is they make you feel very good. They try to escalate a problem on your face, which might be very minor. They try to make it look big then they propose a, a treatment for you, which will be usually higher than the regular facial you would want to do. Do you know why they do that? It's to condition your mind first, to, to, to first think, oh, I have a problem that needs a solution. Mm -hmm. So even before they offer a solution, in your head, you're looking for a solution. Now, in, in this particular um, chapter in Malachi, if you read the, the verses before um, this particular verse, the first verse said, you are cursed with a curse. Mm -hmm. Now, this um, this person writing Malachi is trying to push the narrative to the Christians that, look, there's already a problem here. So now those Christians are looking for a solution. He now enters the next verse and says, will a man rob God? You have robbed me. And he now, he now says, okay, the solution to this curse that is here is Titan. If you bring in your tithes, the windows of heaven will not be open. But as long as you've not bribed God yet with that 10%, <laughs> you're still cursed. So now, they keep hammering on this verse because it's a very manipulative verse. Nobody wants to be cursed. Nobody wants to be poor. Now they're pushing the problem to you that the cause of this, your poverty, is because you're not paying tithes. But that's not true. Pastor Fee, Titan is bribing God. No, you can't. If if truly is God, human beings cannot bribe God. Exactly, but that's the that's the idea the pastors are pushing. Again, I ask, where do you see God? This? Okay, okay, no, wait, wait. it's also let, in the scripture. Let me, Leave the pastors. It's also in the scripture. Let, okay, have to pay guys for the window of heaven to be let's, open. Again, let's come back to the book of Malachi. Yes. All right, the book of Malachi addresses a number of issues. Tight just being one of them. It even addresses even the issue of marriage. Mm -hmm. So it's telling them things that are wrong in the society and the reason why it is happening that time. Now, in, in ex explaining the Bible, exegesis, you, you situate the scriptures within the context. In fact, it is said that a scripture taken out of, uh, when you take, uh, there's a way they say, the context is king. Yeah. When you begin to take a scripture out of context, then you become a con man. Because you can pick anything from the scripture to drive anything home, even bad things. Once you remove it out of context. So I've just told you that the book of Malachi is situated within a context, addressing a particular people under a particular law given to them by God. Under that law, which is stated clearly 
in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, you find out that if you don't pay your tithe, you, the resultant effect is that there's a curse on, on you. So they know that. So the, the Malachi is telling them something they are aware of. He's not trying to manipulate them. They are not just hearing that there's a curse on them for them being under the law. But in our case, we are not longer, we are not under the law. We are not those people. That's why I said Malachi 3 is not a good verse of scripture or passage of scripture to talk to Christians about tithe. Genesis, Abraham's tithing is more appropriate to us because there was no law. It was a voluntary thing. It could have so, uh, Pastor, something. do you think the Bible should be updated? No, it shouldn't. There's no need for that. It, the, the, the scriptures itself explains itself. And that's why you need the pastor. To help you understand and situate the scriptures. Okay, Pastor Faye, not just Christians give. Mm. As is just um, called tithing because it has like a percentage to it. Muslims pay zakah and sadaka, which is like tithe also and arms. And they give offering. But they do this directly to the poor and needy. Why is there a need to take tithe to the church? Okay, good question. Tithing does not even exempt you from giving alms. The Bible encourages you to give to your neighbor. So why not just carry that one tenth and just give it to the poor and needy? Good. This is the this is the issue. Again, you can't do one at the expense of the other. You have to do both. Let me establish that. But as for tithing, why you cannot use tithing as alms? Why also you cannot use your alms as tithing is this. There is Beginning from even the time of Abraham, there's a priesthood. In every dispensation, there's priesthood. Their, their job is to take care of your spiritual well-being. Mm? And the, the God, God has mandated it that they will live off those proceeds. So under the Levitical priesthood, the Levites, they, are, they were not given a portion of the land. Others were given. And there is the way God wants to take care of them is that when you farm and you get your, your produce, you give them a tenth of it. That's how they'll be taken care of. Do you understand? It's not that they chose not to work. God gave them that work that was separate. And that's, he made that provision for them. And that's the way it is with also with the New Testament. Uh, Apostle Paul said, they will, will preach the gospel, should live off the gospel. That is the ordination of God. Do you understand? If I spend my time to watch over you spiritually, pray for you, preach to you, train you in the way of the Lord. I deserve to get from you. And that's what tithe is. Take care of the priests and take care of the church. When people come to church, they sit down, nice chairs, AC blowing, things are working. What do, what do you think, what, where do you think the money is coming from? It's from the tithes and the offerings. Okay. So there's nothing mysterious about this money. Then, like I said, offerings cover those things. Offerings cover those costs you're saying. You, they don't need tithe for them. Have you, have you been in the Treasury of any church before. I've been a pastor for 15 years. I've been a Christian for over 20, 25 years. And I can, I've been in boards of churches and co. To start with, the, the tithe we are talking about, the amount of people who pay tithe in the, in the church, they are very small. The body church runs more, even on free will donations, than even the tithe. So the money we are even arguing about, that's why I'm surprised that then, people don't argue yeah, about why, office. Why, why did the church not just focus on encouraging free will donations and abolishing tithing totally? Good. I don't know when you were growing up. I, this happened to me growing up. Um, you are riding a bicycle. You want to learn how to ride a bicycle. There's this aid they put in a child's bicycle that has uh, yeah. by the sides yeah. to keep the child steady. Yeah. When the child masters it, you remove those aids. That's where tithing is forgiving. Something to help you know that, okay, start up with this. That's the way it is. A good pastor who knows his onions, right, will not, will not armor too much on tithing. However, tithing helps you to be disciplined. It helps you to be disciplined. Discipline with money. With, with giving. With giving. Yes. I actually like this angle that you're coming from because um, tithing has been used um, attached to bless. Are you saying there's no blessing now attached to Titan? There has always been a blessing attached to Titan from time of Abraham when there was no law. That I mean, I that blessing, people blessing. people tithe because they want the blessings that come from it. Well, 
I would not say it that, that way. I often tell people Luke 6 38 says, Give and it shall be given. Good measure, present, shaking together. It doesn't say give because it shall be given. You can do something and you get a, a, a response, but you must not do that thing because, take for instance, I buy a gift. You know, between you and your wife, uh, okay, you're not married. <laughs> so, not so, Shots so fired. yes, yes. Uh, I hope you, I hope the shot doesn't kill you. <laughs> but yeah, here's what I'm trying to say. I buy something for my wife, and I buy it because she's my wife. Yeah. She's happy. She'll give me sex. I mean, part of it. Uh, but by the time I, I start buying it because I want sex, that is now prostitution. Mm -hmm. You see, it's still buying, it's still sex. And that's where it's with giving. When you give to God, you can't bribe God. God has all the resources in the world. He will give you. But by the time you start giving because you think you will use it, to, <laughs> then you are just deceiving yourself. Danny, you said you like his angle. That means, what I would like to ask, what exactly is your problem with Christians that type? Because it's their money. You cannot fault anybody for how they intend to use their money. As a matter of fact, it has worked for most Christians. It still works. Pastor Fei is a tight payer. Forget about my own status as a tight payer. Let's focus <laughs> on Pastor Fei. <laughs> but it works for other people. So where exactly is your problem with Christians that tight? If it works for them, just leave them alone. So um, my problem with tightening is we are copying someone else's law. But it's in the Bible. Yes. So, um, what happened in the Bible days is, you know, there's always two major um, functions of government. The first one is the elected form and, uh, or the royal form, and the second one is the church. The church was a huge part of the government then. So, why the government uses, you know, force and laws to, to keep you down? The church uses God. To still keep the society running together so the government would always work with the church so now the government will tax you and you know in those days when people when the government bring laws or too much taxes people would um, protest and revolt and you know the government will have to use force or kill them to calm them down you get people were not that afraid of death then you get people would protest and revolt against the government and they will use force. But with the church, the church can calm everyone down without using guns. The church just needs to use God. So now, to get more money from people, what the government did was, they had to work with the church. And that's why they, they started pushing the books that had um, ten, uh, one tenth to the church. They started pushing it and like adding it to the scriptures. Like which books? Deuteronomy, Malachi, and the rest. If you go back to Deuteronomy itself, it was a different thing because Deuteronomy said, it's your tithe in the church, in the storehouse. If I may but in, since you have even mentioned the issue of it's your tithe in the storehouse, if you read the scriptures, you find out that the Bible, the Bible actually talks of three types of tithes. One of them is the one that is controversial. This other one is not sp said much, except for when people want to bring up an argument that you are trying to bring up. So there's the tithe that is for the Levites mm -hmm. and the uh, high priest. There's the tithe. It just, remember, so the word tithe... people are supposed to pay 10% three different three, times. Yes. The, look, That's look, 10% to yeah, the church. Yes, that, no, I didn't say to the church. don't increase. No, no, no. no. <laughs> than the government. No, listen now. The second tithe the scripture talks about is the one, th is a, the word tithe means tenths. Yes. You are supposed to gather it. When they have a feast in Jerusalem, which they normally do once a year, mm, you take it with you, or if it's too much for you to carry, because remember, these are agrarian products. Yeah. You, can, uh, you can sell for money. And when you get there, you used to buy something and eat with it. Mm. The other one, was well, the last tithe was for the needy amongst you. So, that tithe you are talking about is not for the priest. This second one you are talking about yeah. is for you. It's more or less like a vacation savings kind of. When we come for a feast, we do it. But Just it has like, to be in the church. No, it, that does not go to the storehouse. Okay. You go to Jerusalem when you go for the feast, mm. right? And with your family. From that tithe is what you used to enjoy yourself. Let me cut in here. Mm. If you don't pay tithe, you will suffer. Job 
gave liberally, but he didn't pay tight. He suffered. I didn't say that. I don't find anywhere we are joke tight. No. He was overly committed to giving liberally to the poor. And God is committed to bless him, but there was no security. So, a lot of Christians, according to Danny, are under fear of being poor, fear of their blessings stopping or having lesser financial breakthroughs. Is that, again, the essence of tithing? Is tithing a requirement for Christians to gain more financially? Will you suffer if you don't pay tithe? Because there was a vi there was a there was a post that Danny replied that said, when he stopped paying tithe, he became fatter. <laughs> that he was skinny. Even his trousers did not touch ground. The way some of you your mind knows to touch ground. So he said, when he stopped paying tithe. So there there have been cases of Christians giving good reports so to say in quotes that their life and income got better because they stopped paying tithe some even said they stopped going to church because of the issue of tithing okay so you should be giving tithe because out of fear god is not looking for an amateur see it's bigger than your money think of it is this if if truly god is who we say he is he can't be pursuing you. He can't be angry with you because you did not pay your tent. That tithe doesn't even go to him, even though it's collected in his name and he sanctions that. It doesn't go to him. It's still used for the benefit of man. So, really, why should he want to kill you because of that? Secondly, so you, there's no reason to be given, not to be given out of fear. It should be, should be out of love and reverence for God. And then the issue of... Uh, some Christians are, not, are giving, are, when they stop giving, they became rich. See, Titan is not the only reason why you will be rich or poor. Like, but is, it, is Titan part of the reason why you will be rich or poor? Oh, well, when you give anything you give to God, God will bless. And that blessing will rest on, on whatever you are doing. So, yes, there is that spiritual advantage to it. Let me add this. But if you don't work okay. or do what you should do, I mean, you just give 10%. Like Dr. Lumine Emmanuel said in one of his videos I stumbled on. He said you give 10% to the church, but you don't do, you, do, you are not taught what to do with the remaining 90%. You are going to be poor. And that's true. Yeah. Does Titan really go to God or the man of God? Titan goes to God. Something can be taken I can command that you take something and I say that, okay, when you give that thing, let Danny, Danny use it. You, that person must realize that you are giving to me, but Danny is the one who is administrating it. We give to the government, I mean, but the ministers of the, of the cabinet, the president determine what to use, but we give to the government. As government, it's the, the government, one person called government particularly come to give to you. You don't see the government, Danny, you see the human being. I want to ask you a question. Yeah. Can you pay 800,000 Naira as tithes if you make 8 million Naira? Even when I was an aggressive tighter, I, I, was, I would not. And a lot of people would not too, you know, if they, if they have a lot of money. It's easier to, to, to be consistent with tithes when you are earning very little. And that is why the preachers hammer on tithes because it's the people who are earning very little that pay the tithes more. The rich men would not, will hardly give you, someone makes 80 million, they will drop 8 million at tight. They will think about it. That's when they will realize that 10% is a lot of money. They will calm down and think about it. It's, the, it's still the poorer people that still pay tight a lot. That, that still give because one, they want to live poverty. But a rich man will look at the 8 million and say, ah, I'll pay heavy offering instead. Or give but one there are people who give tight in that range and more. Yeah, of course. There will so, still be one or one or two of those. No, no, there are a lot. I'm saying a lot of people still won't. He is asking me now. And like I said, I see tight as tax. And this tax had been, it has been imposed by the Europeans and the British. There is a reason why King James, who was a king, was rushing to, to translate the Bible. Because... The, why, it, if I may ask? First of all, it, it's a control of the government. The church has always been a control of the government. If not, a king would not have an interest in the Bible. <laughs> well, you have your understanding of church history wrapped up, really. Since no, I, no, no, I'm, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm yes. It's, it's, it's my, it's my own, it's my own view. I studied that uh, in school, yeah. in Bible school, yes, so let me, I know let, that. Okay, tell me, tell me what you know so, about kings. So, 
the King James version. Yeah. Um, translated, I think, in the year 1611. Yeah. Of course, there will be, you see, as, as with everything God does, there will be God works in the background. So people can do things and do things whichever way they, they choose to do it. Yet God, take for instance, God determined that Jesus was going to be born in Bethlehem. Right? But the, himself and his wife was, were not there. Uh, Joseph and, and Mary were not b- based there. A king just decided that people should go back to their hometown. He wants to, he wants to um, tax them. Now, on the outside, that looks like a king just making a decision. But if you study prophecy, you find out that God made that decision long ago. And, of course, engineered the king to take that decision. King James might have political reasons. I don't doubt why he wants to do the, he wants the Bible translated to English. Yeah. But I tell you, behind that, the hand of God is there. Now, because that happened to be one of the greatest... But how would you know the hand of God is there when he's a king? Everybody who is in government is usually very selfish. You know, they will always do something. Even if it will favor you, it should favor them more. That's how the okay, government so mostly wh- what works. What do you what what do you think King James did it for? It was to favor the government. Which government? He this was government. a he was a king at this point. He I was think we should, to, we should they come needed, back. They needed more money from the people. We should and, come back. And so you mean to say they interpreted, they translated the entire Bible to gentlemen, English? Gentlemen, gentlemen. By the way, that's not the only home. English translation of the Bible. Let's come of back. Course, home, of course, of course not. Gentlemen. So you mean to say that that was done just because of tithes? No, I'm Gen- saying it was done <laughs> because of gentleman. 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 But people have been paying gentleman. tax, Pastor and our kings have been controlling home. us before let's, King James. Let us come back home. <laughs> let us come back home. Maybe at another time we'll come and talk about the history of the Bible. Danny, on the 15th of July, 2024, at exactly 5.28 p.m. Nigerian time, you tweeted, tight is fraud. Why? Because, like I said, it's a very manipulative tool. If you keep, if you keep hammering on how people will stay poor, how people are cursed, if they don't pay this thing, I have a problem with that. That's very manipulative. It means your intentions for these things are not good. I personally chose not to pay tight so I can see that windows of heaven close and it did not close. I've not been paying tight for like four years now since I left my church. But you have been paying tight longer than that. As it, uh, what I mean is this. The years you've used to pay tight are more than the years you've not paid tight. So are you now saying Wait, God, there's a measurement? No, no, I'm, I'm just I'm to. trying to drive you a point. Answer, I want to know yes what the no. point is. No, no, answer the question first. I used to pay tight in <laughs> church. Are you saying the the so I'm saying, saying that still covering me. Well, you are a giver. What I'm saying is that you are not a good. Um, I generally am a giver, and I think no, no, I, the I, universe I, rewards people who give, not people who tight. <laughs> what is tight? Is it not a giving? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that is compulsory. Giving is voluntary. <laughs> I now can decide to give her ten million under the New Testament. Tight it's not is my ten percent. It might even be my eighty percent, but I want to give it out. You know, at this time. So you some, say it's, it's some, a fraud because some, of it's that. fraud some, because you're manipulative about it. You're, this, you're lying. Time, let, let me let me before before, hey, before hey, you hey, hey, up on that. Let me well, I, I I do not rule out the fact that there are pastors who have used it to manipulate people. I don't rule that out. Yeah. Although I must tell you they are in the minority. Because I'm wondering where you get to meet. Oh no, no. They are, they are in the minority. minority. No, you don't know as much pastors as I know. You can't even. So uh, yes, that's the truth. Um, in this age uh, of social media, we see pastors every day. Just, just before we came on this, I was talking about good marriages, bad marriages. You hear a lot of bad marriages on social media. How many good marriages you hear on social media? What is happening is that the bad ones get more publicity. People push bad news because it sells. You don't get to hear about the new ones. So that gives the, the good ones. So that gives the impression that everybody is bad. The, the truth is far from that. Do you Most know pastors why? don't manipulate because how much is the tight? The few ones the that instance. manipulate have very large audiences, and that's why it's. Thank a you for admitting that there are few. I'm telling you the few ones I see. That's that's the problem. There are few. large audiences. If you, as one person, and your church is just fifty persons, your impact is not felt. But the someone who has a lot more into be- billions, I should focus on that person more. But it's when you consider him. Uh, the remaining the remaining pastors you find out that it's just a little drop you know i want to ask a simple question this is a yes or no question to the both of you first of all pastor Faye, should christians tithe i've answered that yes, like, yes. and more again 
this is a yes or no question. <laughs> Don't beat around it. Just yes or no. Should Christians of today tithe? Yes. Danny, should Christians of today tithe? No. My brain is not braining again. Mm. To be honest, if both of them were pastors, I don't know the church I want to go to. No, follow your Bible. Okay. I think it's someone else's law. Thank you very you, much. Don't copy someone else's law. Thank you.